Welcome to Fantastic Plastic, a series of SolidWorks video tutorials presented by the Demonic Group. In Fantastic Plastic, I'll be presenting strategies and techniques for injection molded plastic part design using SolidWorks CAD software. I'm Andrew Lowe. I'm a senior industrial designer with the Demonic Group. The Demonic Group is a full-service product development consultancy located just outside Chicago, Illinois. In this installment of Fantastic Plastic, we'll take a look at a multi-body part modeling strategy uh, where we can add additional geometry to parts where we're importing shell geometry from a master model. So in this situation, we need to add some additional uh, fasting geometry, this kind of portion of the part here. But what we're bringing in from the, the master model has already been shelled. And we don't necessarily need to have this, uh, this geometry and the features that create it in the master model. It's strictly for for fastening. So these be, can kind of be features that can get detailed out in the child parts uh, where we're getting kind of that shell geometry supplied from uh, an industrial design master model. So here we see that part in SolidWorks and let's roll back up to the top of the tree just so that way we can kind of take a look at what we're working with. Now I've cut away some of this part just to kind of simplify it. Um, but all of that uh, fastening geometry we need to create. And so I can't go back and, and add those features before the shell because I want to use or keep them into this child part and not necessarily uh, in the master model where I have access to the actual shell feature that creates this geometry. Uh, so I'm going to model a kind of separate body here and then we can use shell to, uh, to create that. But before I go ahead and start modeling that, I need to create some geometry to help shape that um, you know, in previous installment, we took kind of a look at the uh, untrim tool, which can be useful for extending geometry. So uh, these surfaces here, I'm going to need to help uh, trim everything. So I'm offsetting them, but also note that I'm offsetting them four millimeters to kind of push them back behind the main wall of the part. That gives me a half millimeter uh, clearance between the, the mating part that will come in here. So this kind of detail will sit underneath the other mating part that we can't see right now. Uh, so I've created those offsets. I've used the uh, the untrim to to make them larger, and then I'm using the surface trim tool to kind of trim them to each other. Uh, this is the the mutual trim, so I'm picking all of the portions that I want to have in my trim, and then I'm just selecting what portions I would like to keep. And so I now I have this kind of trim tool. I need one more uh, trim here. You can see I now kind of have a body or a surface body. And what I'm going to do with that is use that to uh, to shape a solid body that I'll create next. So this guy was pretty easy uh, to create. I'm not worrying about shaping the sides of this right now. Uh, all I'm doing is converting these edges uh, from the main part into uh, the sketch. And then I'm going to extrude it up a certain distance. And you can kind of see why now I created uh, that trim tool which was so that way I can shape those outside faces so that way they can align uh, with the part that will sit over top of them. Uh, clean up my model with the, the body delete tool and just so that way we're, we can have a clear definition of what we're working with I change the color of the one body that's kind of gold color uh, versus this kind of bluey color we have here. Um, one thing to be aware of is that sometimes um, when we're creating geometry uh, from a sketch and I, or I kind of extruding it. Uh, unfortunately, I've created some zero thickness geometry. So this is going to, we won't be able to merge these together because they kind of come at that knife edge there. So one quick workaround when, uh, when dealing with a situation is just to use the move face tool. So all I did here was I picked the, uh, the different faces all the way around the perimeter of the part, three faces here, and just moved them over a half millimeter. And now when we look at our preview, Everything looks good. The faces are penetrating each other. So when we do go ahead and uh, combine these two bodies together, we don't get any of that zero thickness and we'll be able to complete the operation. Uh, so I had some additional geometry in the other part that required clearance for, really simple cut. Just kind of cut on this plane, offset from, uh, or just a blind distance. Uh, I need clearance for the pocket on the other part here. So just some additional cuts and drafts to, uh, to shape this geometry. Need to further uh, shape this side wall here. So this is one thing that's kind of neat to work with with the shell tool is that um, when we're ultimately going to shell this part, instead of creating a cut that might pass through some of it, 
uh, we can use the faces to remove tool uh, to actually remove some geometry. So I had to do some kind of little bit of work around here just to add some additional flanges and tabs and such. And now we're ready to, uh, to shell this part before we combine it with the main section. So I'm using a little bit thicker or thinner wall section here just to save some material. Didn't need it to be as thick. Uh, and I'm going through and I'm picking all of the faces I'd like to remove. So obviously we need to remove this back face and this bottom face, but I can also pick those faces uh, kind of from that cut feature. So even though this cut didn't pass all the way through the part, I wasn't really concerned because when I go to shell this part, all of these faces can just get removed in this function. So click OK. And now we have that shell part there. And so now we'll use the combine tool to put these two parts together. And we went from having uh, the one, or the two solid bodies to having uh, one solid body. To go through and just do a little bit of adjustment, uh, this was just for clearance, so a little move face here. And likewise, a little bit of cleanup work. So if we zoom to the inside, we just didn't need that little kind of face there. It wasn't doing anything, so just uh, delete and patch, clean that up. Just kind of a remnant of this kind of arced circular face coming to this, uh, this planar face here just a little bit more uh, details. I'll go in and add some additional draft uh, later in the part, but for now, uh, this kind of portion is done. I do need to add some additional geometry, these little grommets, but uh, pretty easy to do, just some cuts. And for these features here, just some additional extrude features, uh, and was able to quickly add them, just because they were kind of, you know, there's a few of them to, to instead of naming all of them, I just put them in a folder like this to keep my tree nice and clean. So to recap, we can use the, uh, the multi-body strategy to kind of add geometry that should all kind of be part of the main wall of the part, um, but we don't have access, say, to the master model where we have the original shell feature. Uh, so the work around that will create it as a separate body and then shell it out and then combine. Uh, sometimes we do need to create some of that trim geometry, so we're using uh, the offset uh, feature to reveal additional uh, information from the master model, get those surfaces longer so that way we can trim them back. Uh, and just kind of be aware sometimes that we may run into zero thickness geometry errors when using this technique. And a workaround for that is just to use the move face to, uh, to add additional material to a part so that way when we use the uh, combined feature we don't run into any of those errors. Remember this is a good way of shaping kind of the details. Instead of using a cut later on the feature tree that passed all the way through the model, I just kind of created a quick cut in the uh, unshelled part and then when the part gets shelled all those faces can be uh, targeted for removal. And the final operation would be the combine tool and that's going to add the two uh, bodies together. You can see here these are unmerged and we'll combine them together with the, uh, the combine tool. I hope you enjoyed this week's SOLIDWORKS video tutorial presented by the Demonic Group. Please subscribe to the Money Group on YouTube by clicking our logo on the bottom right of the screen to stay up to date on new video releases. As well, click the SOLIDWORKS icon to be taken to our website where you can download the example SOLIDWORKS files used in this week's video. And finally, check out other great content by the Demonic Group, Will It Fill It and Surfaces and Splines by clicking the video links on the left of the screen.